Back in June, I took a trip from my home in eastern Pennsylvania to Urbana, Illinois. And I needed to charge at my destination hotel in Urbana because there wasn't any DC fast chargers there. And it was like 120 to 150 miles back to Indianapolis. Well, I arrived at the hotel. I knew they had EV chargers, but there was a Tesla using the J1772 charger that I was going to use for my Bolt. And the Tesla charging station was open. So what did I do? Fortunately, I carry an adapter for these circumstances. It takes the Tesla destination charger plug, the North American charging standard according to Tesla, and adapts that to J1772. I plugged in, I got a charge that night, I was on my way the next day. I'm Josh, and this is the channel for people who cannot charge at home or charge in weird circumstances. And in this case, a weird circumstance is using a Tesla charger on your non Tesla. Today, I'll be looking at one of these adapters. In particular, a shock flow 48 amp Tesla to J1772 adapter. This won't work on Tesla superchargers because that would require DC charging capabilities and this is only for AC current. So don't try this at a supercharger, it, it just won't work. Shock flow sent me this unit to review, but as you'll see, the opinions aren't necessarily flavored by that. It arrived in a nice little box. It had nice packaging, it was well protected and a small book of instructions. That was pretty much it. And when it comes to these adapters, I always like simplicity because really all you have to do is take a Tesla charger, plug it into the Tesla end of the unit, wait a few seconds according to shock flow and then plug into your vehicle. I found in practice, you didn't have to do it in that order or wait. You could actually plug this into your vehicle and then plug the Tesla end in. I don't recommend you do that because if you do the opposite of that, you'll fry your power pins. So connect this to the cord, to the Tesla end, then put it in your vehicle. When you do connect it to the Tesla end, there's a little latching mechanism here. You need it to be in the position where it says lock to insert the Tesla end. Think of this as the play pause button on your iPhone. If it says lock, that means it's open and you can put the Tesla end in. If it says open, that means it's locked and you can't remove the Tesla end. However, if you make move it back to lock or open, then you can remove it. Kind of confusing. On the other end, to prevent you from removing it from the vehicle, you have a little switch. And this is the standard switch latch arrangement that you have on any J1772 plug. You simply push the switch to release the catch on the vehicle and then you can remove the plug. There is a little switch under the latch that notifies the car that you're going to be disconnecting and it'll shut off the power before you remove it. That prevents arcing in the pins when you remove the adapter. You push the button and it switches somewhere. The one thing I do not like about this adapter is the quality of this switch lock mechanism. So it looks very nice. It has a nice um, quality shine to it. But when you push it, you don't know where that button is. In fact, sometimes I can't even hear it. You can hear it barely. And you have to push it very far before it engages. It's also very mushy feeling is my best way of describing it. I don't like that because I like to have a nice, clean, crisp click when I click this button. And I like it to click immediately when I push it. So when you push this onto the socket of the car, the latch slips into a little latch clip. And when you push this down, you need to have that button engage before it releases over that lip. If you have to push this too far, there's a little danger you could slip past the lip without notifying the car you're disengaging. And I'm not 100% sure if that's happening here because I just can't hear this switch clicking. It's, it's really kind of annoying. Another thing I always look at on these units is the actual female power pins on the J1772 side. Inside these female pins are these rotating finger spring-loaded bits that push in against the male pin that's inserted. And those make the connection to the power supply. Now, if that connection isn't very good, what will happen is this will heat up over time. And if it got really, really bad, you could potentially melt the unit and mess up your vehicle as well. There is a different design where the female pin is split into four sections with a metal spring around the outside, and that crimps those four pieces in against the male pin. And I tend to think that is a little bit more secure crimp 
than this spiralized design that the shock glue uses. But either way, to test those pins, what I did is I charged at 32 amps, which is the max charging current of my bolt, for an hour with the shock flow, and then I hit it with my IR camera to see what the temperature on those pins were. I did the same thing for my Altel Maxi Charger, which has a similar female pin to the shock flow, and I checked the temperature there. And you can see that the Altel runs three to four degrees Celsius cooler than the shock flow. And considering that this is in the winter time and the ambient temperatures are around freezing, that's actually significant. In the summer, that might be a higher differential. So I don't like how the shock flow handles those connections. It seems like they're heating up a little bit more than they should be. Overall, the unit works as intended. You plug it into the vehicle. I can charge it up to 7.7 .7 kilowatts. You hit the button to release. It kills the relay on the Tesla charger and you can release the unit from the vehicle. The sliding switch works. It's not perfect, but it works to connect to your Tesla end and so on and so forth. There's some nice little knurls on this. It's a nice looking design. It's a little chunky in the hand, but you don't use these things that much. So ergonomics isn't a number one concern here. The final thing I did to check out the quality was to open it up. And this has four Phillips screws and a couple Torx screws that you need to take out. The Phillips screws seem to be glued into the unit, which is probably why one of those twisted off when I opened it up. I was kind of shocked that I could twist it off as easily as I did. So once again, not a huge plus for the shock flow. But once I got into it, all the wiring looked good. It is decently weather sealed. You can use this in some rain, some moisture. I actually tested that. I had it on my car during a decent storm here and I didn't have any issues. Some users have had some issues when you get moisture into the Tesla end. That wasn't my experience in my limited testing. So what do I like about this unit? Well, I like the size. You can throw it in your glove box anywhere else in your car you need it for those charging emergencies, and that's great. The price is also very good, $100 to $140. I have links in the description as well as some links that are coupons for my viewers. So you can check those out. But at the same time, I don't think the price advantage over the competition is enough to actually recommend this unit. You're saving 10 to 30 bucks and just the quality and the way the features are laid out on this thing, such as this confusing switch, aren't enough for me to recommend. Now, maybe I would recommend it if you're only using it occasionally for emergencies. I think it should be just fine, but I, I still, wouldn't recommend this for everyday use just because I'm not sure the quality is up to snuff for that. Still, it's an interesting adapter, looks nice, and um, you know, if you want to check it out, check it out. But that's my review of the Shock Flow 48 amp Tesla the J1772 adapter. So, as I said at the beginning, this channel is all about charging for people who can't charge your EVs at home or for when you're out on the road and you need to charge somewhere. If that interests you, subscribe, like, comment, all of the good things, and I will see you guys in the next video.